Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and I just wanted to do a quick and dirty presentation on spotting 2011 MacBook Pro GPU defects. Um, these defects are something I deal with quite a bit as a refurbisher. Basically, 2011 was an absolutely horrible year for Apple. Uh, the 15-inch Pro uh, i7 Quad series they came out with, both the early 2011 and the late 2011, uh, they were just awful machines. After uh, only a little while after um, being released, they started to show GPU defects. And um, the thing with these these defects is that once you get them, your machine is 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 scrap basically. Like you can't continue using it uh, to any uh, significant degree. Um, it's not practical to fix them, especially now. And it was just a big mess. Uh, to this day, actually even more now, uh, um, as the defect. Um, exhibits itself more strongly, I mean, I'll buy a hundred of these machines and 50 or 60 of them will have the defects. So um, it's a really, really bad problem. Um, really bad year for Apple. So symptoms, how do you, how do you spot this, uh, th this problem? Um, it exhibits itself in a lot of different ways. And this list here is kind of an order of, uh, the, you know how common the symptoms are. So the ones at the top are more common than the ones at the bottom. Um, so not booting past the Apple screen, I'd say is probably the most common symptom. So the Apple comes up, then it disappears, then you have a white screen. Um, what is going on there is usually you'd have the Apple and then you see sort of a blip in the video and then it would go to the OS. Well, that blip is when it flips over to the OS drivers, the OS video drivers. So if it's failing to load the video drivers and get a display, then you're seeing that white screen, and that's pretty much a, a sure thing that you have a GPU defect when you go from the Apple to a white screen and it does not go into the OS. Very, very, very common. I'd say the second most common um, symptom is an array of sort of horizontal interlaced lines. So it's almost as if every other line on the screen, the horizontal lines um, are um, different colors or you know black and the white and the black and the white, just sort of an odd uh, appearance to the screen. This the image on the background here is a GPU defect machine, not exactly the interlaced look that I'm talking about, but if you imagine them horizontal instead of diagonal like that, and then a lot uh, smaller, um, it's something along those lines. Pretty much any time you see a strange graphical pattern on the screen, geometric shapes, uh, just odd blocky figures everywhere, that's always generally going to be uh, a GPU defect. Uh, next, I'd say no external video output. If I'm on the fence about whether a machine is a GPU uh, defect machine or not, uh, external video is a good uh, good test. If you see a, if you get a black screen externally, uh, that's a, a, a pretty sure indication. Um, more than occasional video artifacts. Artifacts are graphical representations of the fact that you have a defective GPU, or 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 your GPU is overworked. Um, it is possible to push a GPU um, way too far such that it shows artifacts when it's actually still a pretty good uh, GPU. But what I mean by more than occasional is if you're just doing normal stuff and the screen kind of glitches out for a second and then it goes back to normal, that sort of thing, that's an indicator. Random rebooting, especially rebooting that occurs just over and over and over again. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that random rebooting is a, is an indicator of a bad GPU, but it's such a common symptom that seems to be in the same realm as all of these others that um, I'm including it here. Um, and you know, even if it's not technically a GPU defect, it means your machine is 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 toast unless you know board repair. So uh, there's that. And then sleep light and no video. So black screen with a sleep light going in and out. Um, 2008 was also a really, really bad year for Apple. The 2008 15-inch uh, um, Pros were awful. And their most common symptom for a bad GPU was sleep light with no video. Uh, it's less common with 2011. I do see it, but it's, it's far less common. Um, I will say if you have that symptom and you think 
you think that's what your machine is doing, make sure it's not uh, a RAM issue because the wrong RAM in a 2011 will also cause the sleep light and no video symptom. Um, 2011s take 1333 megahertz um, DDR3 SODIMs. So make sure you're not using 1066 or 1600 megahertz RAM because you will see that symptom in a 2011 and you don't want to uh, misdiagnose your machine. So testing, how do you, how do you, how do you test for this? I've pretty much gone through it already. Uh, what you want to do is boot with a known good external hard drive. Uh, known good means you've seen it working with your own eyes, not it's supposed to be working. Um, not someone told you it's working, not it's new, so it should work, but you've seen it working with your own eyes. Um, because you, again, you don't want to misdiagnose based on having bad tools. Um, it needs to have an OS on the bootable hard drive up to um, High Sierra because 2011s don't take Mojave. I use, I still use Snow Leopard for external drives because it, it boots super quickly. Um, so you want to boot with the external hard drive and then you want to go through the system list and see what you see. Um, you can run Apple ASDs, uh, Apple System Diagnostics uh, tools. Um, they're out there to be found if you want to look for them. Um, I Sometimes they, they will show you GPU defects, sometimes not. Um, I am not a huge fan of diagnostics. I prefer to kick the tires and make the device show me that it has a problem or that it doesn't have a problem. The problem with diagnostics is you get an error code and then you don't know if the, if the problem is the diagnostics or if the machine still has actually has an issue. You, you still then have to make the machine show that it has an issue, even if you uh, have an error code. So I, you know, like I said, I prefer to just push the machine hard and see uh, if I can produce the problem. Um, and um, as far as that goes, burning in machines, I burn in a 2011 all day long uh, to make it prove itself. I let it sit there turned on with an HD video on loop, um, just trying to get uh, GPU defects out of it, try to get it to overheat, try to get it to reboot, try to get it to shut off. Uh, you just want to push it hard and make it prove to you that it is a good machine. Um, also, um, iTunes Visualizer has a knack for bringing out GPU defects. Uh, you may or may not remember, uh, iTunes Visualizer is um, a mode of iTunes that sort of shows dancing graphics that sort of pulse along to, to your music while you're playing your music. So um, if you're on the fence about whether a, a GPU is, is bad or not, and you can actually get to the visualizer, um, then run that and if you see some really crazy pixelated um, graphical stuff that is not, obviously not, you know, Apple uh, graphics, then uh, that can be an indication. And then like I said before, try external video, see if you get a black screen. And um, so now to repair or not repair. Um, increasingly, the, the answer to that is no, don't repair, just because of economics, unfortunately. Uh, repair costs two to $400, and replacing the machine costs two to $400. You know, if, if someone who does board repair knows what they're worth, they're going to charge you two to $400. Uh, it's not worth their time to fix it for, you know, $120 or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to justify spending $350 when you can buy uh, a replacement laptop for that price. If you do go with repair, um, make sure the person actually replaces the chip. Uh, make sure they're not using ovens or heat guns or being kind of vague about what their process is uh, because ovens and heat guns are very destructive. They're very reckless. They're very indiscriminate. They'll, you know, melt other parts of the board that don't need work. Uh, and even if it does seem to fix the issue, you know, the issue will come back in two weeks. So, you know, make sure you've, you're, you're, you're dealing with someone who's transparent about what their process is and that they're actually replacing the chip. Um, disabling a GPU is something that people do. These machines, the 2011s, they have what's called discrete graphics. They have two GPU, GPUs, actually. There's one GPU that uses system memory, and then there's another GPU that has its own RAM. 
And when you have a GPU defect, it tends to be one or the other of the GPUs that is, is defective. So what people do is they modify the system in some way such that it only uses the good GPU and then the machine basically works. It only has one GPU at that point. Um, I don't, I'm really not interested in this solution because I sell computers and I would not want to uh, give people the impression they have a fully working machine when they've actually got something that's hacked uh, and somewhat defective. So it's not for me, not something I would ever want to do. But if you have your own laptop that you want to get working again or you're just experimenting, you know, hey, go for it. That's a, it's a, it, it is a viable thing to do. I just, I don't want to uh, deceive people. So recommendations, what do you do with these things? Um, I recommend selling them. Um, I sell dozens of them to, to uh, refurbishers who do board repair and are set up so it's efficient for them to replace the chips. Um, they buy them from me stripped down without memory, hard drive, battery for about $80 each. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it, it's still a, a good deal to sell them. Uh, keep in mind, it is early 2019 when I'm doing this video, so if it's a year from now, uh, then forget this. It's probably not an option anymore. Um, but if you put your machine on eBay, uh, you're clear about the fact that it has a GPU defect, maybe take some pictures. Um, you know, these people will find you because they're always scavenging for machines. As far as what to do when someone has a 2011 with a problem and, you know, they need a solution, uh, I would never give them another 2011. Um, I would give them a 2012 instead because those are much more stable. They take um, Mojave, um, possibly even a, a newer OS that's yet to come out uh, instead of just High Sierra. Um, again, much, much more stable machines, much better computers. Um, so I would definitely, if they're still interested in the same form factor with expandable RAM and hard drive, I'd definitely recommend a 2012 instead of a 2011, if not a Retina. You know, it's, it's getting to the point where Retinas have been out for a long time. You know, realistically, it's, it's, we're almost to the point of just needing to recommend Retinas to people. 2014, 2015, those are going to last them a lot longer and they're a lot more powerful. So the third and best option, I think, is um, is the glitch art option. So if you have a 2011 and it does boot past the Apple and it boots to the desktop and it does all kinds of really crazy, fantastic uh, graphical stuff with uh, geometric shapes and colors and uh, all of that, I might be interested. I do, I, I make glitch art out of uh, machines with bad GPUs. So take some pictures of it, go to my website, rdklinc.com, click on sell me your computer, um, submit a quote request, and I'll let you know if I think it's something I find interesting. I might uh, buy it from you and turn it into art. So anyway, uh, that's about it. I hope you found this useful, and uh, thanks for watching. All right, so I thought I'd end uh, by showing you a 2011 MacBook Pro with bad GPU in action. Uh, exciting stuff here. So I'll power on, hold down the option key, got my external drive plugged into USB. It's got Snow Leopard on it. Could have anything up to High Sierra. So I'm booting in option mode by holding down the option key. There's only one uh, bootable option available, which is the external drive. I'll select that. There's the Apple. There's the progress dial. And poof, it's gone. So we're not seeing the pointer come up as we would normally. We're not seeing the OS appear. So that is one confirmed uh, bad GPU machine. So this guy, unfortunately, is toast. So anyway, thanks for watching.